Hello there guys, it's Tonka here, and we're here today on Overlook, one of our first round maps for the Over the Void Lane tournament. And this map is by Eye of the Poodle, and it will be seen twice in the first round by uh, in two different games. And without further ado, let's go for a map breakdown. So, the map starts off with quite a traditional drop, and uh, straight off the bat, teams can find very basic kind of PvP supplies. So, it really does start straight away. There's no kind of hesitation for teams to get involved trying to throw each other off, trying to just disrupt a good start as much as they can. And then if we come through here we find the first lot of big supplies. So the rather nice kind of music chest, as long as the jukebox, can really throw off the other team. I'm just kidding. Um, of course it's there for a bit of fun. It'll be interesting to see if teams play music or not. And in here there are some rather vital blocks as well as more PvP supplies and you know a bit of food to get them started. Now not very well hidden there is underneath this bed some more kind of a bit more powerful supplies you've got your enchanted swords, armor, bows and uh, a few more other supplies but the main kind of priorities in there for the team are the enchanted armor It'll be interesting to see how teams go about like splitting those between their team, as there's only really like one full set, one sword, one bow, and one set of armor. So it'll be interesting to see if they all go into one person or if they're all split into like everyone differently to like so everyone gets a different part. Now the first main obstacle teams will face is this huge gap, and uh, there are many different ways teams can try and tackle this. Whether it's bridging across or I don't know, dropping down into this water, every team will be looking to get across as quickly as possible, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how teams go about maybe trying to stop the other team from crossing, um, and whether anyone can successfully hold them off a bit, as a good hold off at the start can really kind of pay uh, pay dividends later on, as the time gained here allows you to control a lot of the map further on. However, if teams choose to go down, they will be rewarded if they can get past a varied amount of uh, mob spawners. There are demolition supplies available with a blast protection for four chest plate, so teams can be looking to set up cannons of all sorts, as well as some more combat gear, a knockback one, bane of arthropods, five, fire aspect one sword, as well as a punch one, power one bow. It's quite like it's quite strong early on. Uh, especially since the armor is not too powerful in this map. It's something that I quite like about this map. Armor is not a huge part of it. Generally, you're not going to be seeing too many people outside of leather armor, which I think really does spice up PvP as you don't have people just kind of walking through any obstacles that they come across. And if teams go across the other side and get past these range of uh, mob spawners, then they'll get a not so uh, not as interesting chess, it's just more kind of survivalist gears, you know, more leather so they can make sets of armor as well as food and uh, picks of all sorts. However, for the more adventurous ones, they may travel upwards and around, go past the skeleton spawner as well as the cave spiders, which can be really, really dangerous early on as um, the amount of damage they do with the lack of armor you may have early on can really drop you low. But if teams decide to go here, they will be rewarded with diamond blocks and considering uh, armor isn't huge on this map um, that can really uh, make or break a game I'll be interested to see if a team does go for those diamond blocks though as you do have to kind of go for the iron and then come back so the diamonds aren't very easily accessible so it'll be interesting to see how teams go about those however if they do get across the uh, big gap at the start they will come to the beautiful forest now in this forest, they're rewarded with a nice little farmer, Johansson's fresh from the farm food. Um, the food is in it isn't large, but uh, the torches may come in handy as well as the extra blocks and you know the wheat does provide a certain amount of food, but um, it's not a huge amount considering food is quite ready readily available in other chests like this one. So there's more kind of uh, supplies ranging all the way up this uh, mountain, from bows to another one that you saw down below. So, there's a lot to keep teams going so they won't be starved of resources straight off the bat, which is quite nice. 
Now, if teams get to the top of the mountain, then they can go into this chest. Some extra supplies, there's nothing too kind of um, special here. It would be interesting to see if teams use these at all, um, like the cauldron, the water bottles. If teams come up with a strap regarding these, it would be interesting to see what they can come up with. They're kind of very different resources. So, uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see if those get used at all. As well as over here, another artillery chest, but this time there is a power one bow with 100 uh, uses on it. I would not be surprised at all if teams try and get that as quickly as possible to give some early pressure and some more survivalist equipment in here. Now here is the first wall, the Yeti's Descent, and it is the green wall. And uh, it is a mainly PvE wall mixed in with a bit of PvP because it is quite an open wall. And quite like every wall on this map, it is a very open map, which is uh, mainly why it was chosen as a first round map. I, I thought the kind of close games with the PvP will make it interesting and uh, here is also the main supply of iron this is where you'll be finding teams mining the iron if they so choose to go for it that's why it's difficult for teams to get the diamonds earlier on the map because they have to come here first if they want to get to those diamonds however if they do attempt this first wall they'll be treated with not one not two but three layers of PVE. However, you may think, oh, that's not too difficult. You know, it's only layers at a time, and you know, if they get early enough, the mobs won't be too big of an issue. Wrong. The issue is not really getting down to the bottom. Teams can f use many different techniques to make their way down. However, getting up is what really surprised me about this wall. So if you go in here, teams will grab their purple wall, and then they'll be challenged with this huge, huge problem. Especially if the team, on the, uh, the other team, are giving you any sort of harassment, you'll be you could be stuck here for ages. This is going to be one of the most challenging parts of this map, in my opinion. And uh, the way of getting up, if they choose to go pillaring or laddering, they're always going to come across the mob problem. So teams may have to take their time lighting up, making sure there's no chance of a sneaky skeleton shooting you as you're in this one wide gap, which really does not give you any protection if you get hit at all because you'll be sent flying off the map straight into the void lane and sadly you can't go over the void lane so if teams do manage to get that first wall they will then be presented with the odd biome change as the map creator jokes about in these signs into the desert and in here you'll be presented with the second wall devil's dive and it is a lime wall this is a more kind of recognizable uh, PvP wall. Uh, it's a kind of shoots and ladders with a twist. Uh, the main twist being the lava. Uh, teams have to kind of make their way through however they choose to go through the lava. And uh, then they've got stone mixed with, in with sne sneaky silverfish blocks that they have to travel through with mini checkpoints in between if they so choose to hide from the other team trying to stop them from making their way through. And it's quite a long one, but very compact, which makes it very easy for the other team to PvP. As um, from here, you can easily see the, the other team's whole wall. So through this whole time, you can be shooting at them without any kind of worry, unless they're in a checkpoint. If teams do make it through with the ladders, they're then presented with the final problem, which is the main lava port itself. So teams will have to find a way to get down through here and then make their way over to the wall bolts, where they will find lime wall. Under, underneath it though, there is the extra reward if teams so choose to go for it. It is quite difficult to get to, but the reward is pretty great. If teams get in here, they are presented with a block of diamond, four blocks of iron, bunch of food, golden apples, extra supplies, and two sets of chainmail. I don't know if it will be used, but if it, if it is, I can see it being very very helpful if we go back up to the top we'll see uh, in here there are some extra demolition supplies so there's a lot of opportunities for cannons in this map as all the walls are very open there's a lot of chance to kind of disrupt your enemy team and uh, it'll be interesting to see what cannons we see being picked up now onto our third and final wall we are greeted with the 
pillar of the fallen warrior. This is the cyan wall, and uh, it's a very, <laughs> very open wall with lots of gaps for you to fall and be knocked off. So teams will be most likely uh, bridging their way across from island to island with small amount of supplies in between, with extra blocks being the main kind of helpful uh, aid for teams as they make their way slowly across with the a lot of spawners in between to try and disrupt their progress and if they so make it all the way across without dying or being stopped by the other enemy team then they're presented with the third and final cyan wall. At this point they have to make their way back and if I quickly fly back from my compass so they then have to make their way back over this uh, kind of big overlay and back to the victory monument so they cannot simply just go for the quick rush one way route they have to make sure they have a way to get back to so that they can place the walls down on the monument purple lime cyan well guys this is overlook it looks like a very interesting map and it'll be interesting to see how it plays out we've got two games on this map we have a match between rush for wall and flannel and we have a match between speed running guilds speed running guild I'm sorry and Euro PP Girl Scout Pandas 2.0 so guys I hope you look forward to this match this has been Tonko peace